Hello friends, James Stevenson and Loki back with another episode of What's in James's Forecast Now? It's been a long time, I feel like, since I've made any forecast review videos. And uh, Loki is exhausted from having done all the work making the forecast. I'm just here to share with you the story and the charts behind the forecast for my Tesla earnings expectations for the rest of this year and into next year. And if Loki runs back over to his bed, uh, you'll see what he's doing in the Loki cam over there. But uh, until then, let me share my desktop with you and show you the uh, charts that I will be posting to X when I start uh, putting out my latest forecast expectations. You know, uh, I had thought that Tesla was going to be up near the 700 or maybe even 800,000 unit range by the end of 2025 previously. And what Tesla is telling us now is, hey, no, uh, it's not going to go that high. It'll be less than that. But I think there is still some room for growth next year for 2025 to beat 2024 uh, earnings or, or deliveries expectations, I should say. So uh, up through Q2 of 2024, as uh, Loki runs back over to his bed, uh, these are actuals from 2018 all the way up through Q2 2024, and then the rest of the way across, this is my forecast. So I'm expecting Q3 to be very similar uh, to what Q4 was, right, Loki? I say I'm expecting it. Loki is really the one who puts the forecast together. He's, he's the brains of this outfit as he poses in front of his chart that he made. I should get him a little uh, green visor that he can wear. Let me get some of that brightness from the screen behind him out of the shot so you can see him better with a little better resolution there as he curls up in bed. So for Q3, I'm not expecting much different. I am expecting more Model Ys to be sold from Shanghai. You can see those in the yellow shade here. Uh, the small robo-taxi, we don't get any of until very late next year. So Q3 or Q4 of 2025 is when you see a teensy sliver of cyber cab. That might be what they call a small slash robo-taxi. It could be called a cyber cab. Uh, we'll see what they say. But uh, cyber trucks are also going to be picking up as time goes by. That's the silver section you see me highlighting here. So next year, Tesla is going to sell more cyber trucks as they ramp up production and deliver more of the non-Foundation Series cyber trucks at lower price points. So I think a lot of folks who had Cybertruck reservations, don't want a Founder Series Cybertruck. They're waiting for that price drop to $79,990 maybe, uh, or uh, for the single motor, uh, if Tesla decides to make that next year, $62,990 or something in that range as a starting price before options. So that's this first chart. Uh, in my thread. Let me click through here again and show you the next one. This is just the S3, X, and Y uh, models. So that's most of them. <laughs> and you can see them just a little differently here than the previous chart. So for these, the S and the X are in the red and the blue. They're pretty small. So in 2024, uh, these were really low numbers. I'm expecting them to go higher in Q3 because they had so much starting inventory uh, at the end of Q2, uh, but then for that to pare back some and level off thereafter. So good numbers for S and X, uh, I think we can hope for in Q3. And a little better sales of Model 3, even if Model Y sales aren't uh, as good. I think it was in China that the Model 3 inventory uh, looked a little high at the end of the quarter. So if that works itself out better, then uh, 
in total, we're not looking at a very different quarter in Q3 from Q2. So if you're looking for the, the very short version of my forecast for Tesla's Q3 earnings, it's don't expect anything very different from what we just saw in Q2. So if you liked Q2, you'll probably like Q3 also. Uh, that's not what I wanted to click on. I do have my earnings model behind the charts, but I wanted to keep showing you charts uh, about production. That'll be this first video, production and delivery charts. So here's one that's just Model 3 and Model Y. Model 3, I've kind of got plateauing here some uh, at around 130,000 for the next uh, several quarters with Model 3 deliveries doing a little better uh, in Q3 than we saw them do in Q1, certainly, or Q2. Q1, wow, that was the worst in a few years for Model 3 uh, that we saw in Q1. But uh, Q2 looked uh, a lot better than Q1 did. But I'm, I've got Model 3s holding in this range as Model Ys continue to step on the accelerator from four production locations globally, uh, unless one of those, which would be the one in Austin, I think, uh, gets converted to a cyber cab production line in Austin. So if that happens in 2025, all bets are off. Maybe these Model Y production numbers don't happen next year if they need that line to make cyber cabs. And here's another look at total Tesla quarterly production and deliveries by quarter. Again, you're looking at actuals uh, all the way up until Q2 of 2024. So here's Q2 of 2024. We did see these cross each other from Q1 to Q2. So production and deliveries, when the production is more than the deliveries are in your building inventory, when the production is less than the deliveries were, you're drawing down inventory. You're selling through some of your inventory, right? So uh, for most future quarters, I expect production to be more than deliveries and for Tesla to build some inventory. And that's what that chart tells you. <laughs> this one was a better joke uh, a, a few years ago when I first started making it. So back here, you know, I think it Maybe I started making it here. I was like, hey, uh, Tesla Q, go ahead and pencil in your forecast for what you think the deliveries are going to be. But look, it's an up and to the right trend. Well, lately it hasn't been an up and to the right trend. So Tesla had its best deliveries quarter in Q4 of 2023. And Q2 was also a pretty strong quarter that hasn't been bested since, uh, apart from this one that was record deliveries. So Q1 down under 400,000 deliveries, and then in Q2, surprising a lot of folks, up over 440,000. Uh, that's good enough for the third strongest quarter ever. This was a record quarter for revenue. Even though the deliveries were third best all time, it was the number one best all time for revenue because the regulatory credits were really strong and because Tesla Energy was really strong. And you won't see that in these deliveries because Megapack deliveries don't count as deliveries. Only automotive deliveries count as deliveries. So you can't tell uh, how much Tesla Energy revenue you're going to get by looking at the delivery number. And is that the last chart I wanted to show you in this video? Yes, I will save the revenue chart for the next video. So with that, I will check back in with Loki, who has decided to curl up in bed over there. And I'll say stay tuned for the rest of the videos in my forecast review series for Q3 2024. Uh, thanks to everybody who supports me, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com. And I'll see you in the next one.